The idea germinated in 1999. Eli Lilly scientist Joyce Gustafson and IUPUI academic Georgia Miller compared notes and discovered there were very few women like themselves in science and technology jobs in Indianapolis. Many technology advances were part of our national and local fabric in that year. The internet, personal computers, and email were mainstream. IT departments anticipated computer systems would crash at midnight, ringing in Y2K, and the Chandra X-ray Telescope launched as part of NASA's Great Observatory in the Sky. Despite this exciting boom in science and tech, these careers were predominantly male-dominated. Gustafson and Miller decided to change that paradigm in Indianapolis where they lived and worked. With significant support from others in the Central Indiana STEM community, they founded Women in High Tech. This nonprofit organization was officially incorporated to support research, education, knowledge, and development that address the specific needs of Indiana women involved or interested in one or more of the high-tech industries. The founders were driven to change implicit and outright gender bias in these fields. In the organization's formative years, many of the high-tech jobs of today didn't exist, and some may even have sounded futuristic or far-fetched. Today, however, Women in High Tech's membership is representative of industries across all science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM fields. Despite the evolution of its logos and taglines over the years, the core mission of Women in High Tech has not changed. Women leading women and setting an example for others to follow is one of Women in High Tech's fundamental values. Throughout its existence, the organization has hosted well-attended professional development panels and presentations on timely and relevant subject matters. These include executive women's forums to offer insight and encourage dialogue, Operation All to acknowledge the importance of male allies who support women in STEM professions, spring, summer, and holiday networking events to meet like-minded STEM professionals, make connections, and to have some fun while doing so. And the fall retreat at the French Lick Resort to allow relaxation, rejuvenation, and inspiration. Members join this organization because they find their tribe. They also give and receive mentoring benefits as women in high tech partners and co-networks with other local professional development organizations. Enlightening girls in grades K through 12 about the exciting possibilities in STEM careers has been another cornerstone mission. This grassroots effort strives to break the long-time false stereotype that boys are naturally better at math and science. The Passport to High Tech annual event was invented to expose girls ages 7 to 14 to real-life STEM experiences and female role models working at local STEM companies. The idea is to build a girl's confidence. If you see it, you can model it and become it. Another STEM Day experience, Ignite Your Superpower, was created to focus on a more diverse population of young girls. More than 600 Central Indiana middle school girls, many from underserved or unrepresented families, experience a day on a college campus and are invited to expand their horizons. Local STEM professionals volunteer as superheroes to chaperone these girls through hands-on experiments and interactive exhibits.
From the onset, women in high tech understood the importance of recognizing women of achievement in science and technology. They also knew they had to continue to invest in their future by offering college scholarships to women pursuing STEM degrees. This was the beginning of the work ahead to elevate women in STEM to where they deserved. Women in High Tech's initial Spotlight Awards has since evolved into the highly prestigious Leading Light Awards. It's at this biennial awards and scholarship gala where the who's who of Indiana female STEM leaders and the next generation of women STEM practitioners are widely recognized and awarded funding to continue their prestigious work. The organization's initial scholarships were funded through members and friends, and a portion of each awards dinner was set aside for the gifting of scholarships. Today, Women in High Tech is fortunate to count on a growing base of sponsors, many of whom have been there from the start, to help finance the organization's scholarships. This support, coupled with other fundraising efforts, accounts for Women in High Tech's ability to award numerous undergraduate and graduate STEM scholarships for women who plan to remain and work in Indiana. Professional development grants are also awarded to women in established careers, seeking to continue to enhance their STEM skills in rapidly changing areas like IT coding or entrepreneurship. Additionally, Dozens of local high school girls are recognized each year for computing-related achievements and interests, thanks to several notable and long-standing partnerships. You can just do the math to figure out that Women in High Tech has become a formidable influencer in Indiana over the past two decades. Around 2,000 members, including females and males, about 50 corporate sponsors, endorsements by six major Indiana universities and colleges, numerous annual public speaking invitations and engagements, countless women in high tech informational booth presence at local events, ever increasing news media coverage creating more awareness. The founding ladies planted a seed of bravery, curiosity, and strength in an organization that has flourished and grown into a deeply rooted commitment to help females claim their share of STEM opportunities. Women in High Tech has come very far since its inception. While there is still more work to do, the future of creating an equally inclusive STEM landscape for all looks very bright. Celebrating our past and investing in our future, Happy 20th anniversary, women in high tech, and many happy returns.